Hi, I'm Abolare. Today's episode is on circular flow of income. And the concept of circular flow of income explains how money moves from one economic entity to another. And when we talk of economic entities, they are also called decision-making agents, such as individuals, business firms, and governments. So how does income moves or money moves from these various economic entities within an economy? So let's get down to business as usual. So, oh, that's the money I spent some months back. The money which you've spent some months, some years back, might come back to you. And that explains the concept of circular flow of income. And it's kind of similar to the concept of velocity of money. Those that are scientifically uh, inclined, we understand what I'm talking about with respect to velocity of money. The rate at which money changes hand. So that's with respect to that. So let's talk about our new words for today. Leakages. Leakages are economic activities that withdraw or reduce the money in circulation. Another word for leakages are outflows. And examples of them, we have savings, we have taxation, and we have imports. That means each time any of these occurs, the flow of money in circulation will reduce. Excuse me. For example, savings. If assumption, assumption, the money in circulation is $200. Assumption. <laughs> I know $200 is just uh, a chicken feed that could be in any economy, but assumption now. $200 is in circulation, and out of this $200 that is in circulation, $50 is saved with the financial institution. And that means the money in circulation will reduce to $150. So that's leakages, savings. Taxation. When government imposes new taxes or increase the existing tax rates with the people or with the citizen, what happens is that the government will have more money with them and as a result, the money in circulation will reduce. Imports. Imports means buying. And that means when a country imports more, the country pays other countries of the world. And that means money is leaving your economy to or for other countries. So is it good for an economy to import too much? No. Too much of importation of goods uh, by a country is not good because Money will be leaving your country for other country, and that country will be creating employment in other countries of the world. So that's with respect to leakages. Injections. Injections are economic activities that increase the flow of income or money in circulation. And another word for injection is inflows. Examples of injection activities are investments, government expenditure, and exports. Now, with respect to investment, investment means the use of resources to build new capital goods, primarily to create employment. And investment is usually made by investors, be it local investor or foreign investor. So when more money is being used, to build new capital goods such as roads, schools, dams, what happens is that more money is being pumped into the economy. And that means the money in that country will increase. Government expenditure. In the process of government trying to maintain its administration, paying salaries, wages, putting in place schools, healthcare system and all that. Government spends and that means the money in circulation will increase. And lastly, we have exports. Exports means when a country sells to other countries. And when a country sells to other countries, what that means is that the country will receive 
incomes from selling and that money which they are receiving we increase the money in circulation or the flow of income in circulation so that's with respect to leakages and injections are leakages good for an economy no are injections activities good for an economy absolutely yes so that's with respect to leakages and injection as our new words for today so let's talk about two sector model two sector model with respect to household and business firms we have three sector don't forget we have individuals firms and government but with respect to two sector we're going to be looking at households and firms so how does income move from the household to the firm to the firm or from the firm to the household so let's take a look at that now one of the assumptions of circular flow of income is that factors of production such as land labor capital and entrepreneurial services are owned by the households and everyone knows that for a firm to produce the firm needs the service of factors of production which are land labor capital and entrepreneur they are also called factor inputs so the firm will request the service of factors of production from the household one of it is labor services so the household will supply labor services to the business firm and for the firm to produce it needs labor services and the household will supply labor services to the business firm now upon supplying the firm's uh, labor services the firm will have to pay for that labor services which the household has supplied to the firm so the firm is paying payments for labor services now households consume just like business firms also consume consumption is constant so for the household to uh, consume the household needs to buy that from the business firm so because firms produce goods and services so the firm we have to, so the household will request the supply of goods and services from the business firm and the business firm will supply goods and services to the household you can see the arrow is coming this way that's from the firm to the household and having supplied the household goods and services then the household will have to pay the business firms as payment for goods and services which has been supplied by the firm now one thing you should know here is that the payment for labor services by the firm to the household represents the household's income that's the household's income that's where the household gets its income from the payments for labor services that it has rendered to the firm how does the firm get its revenue from the payments of goods and services by the household so when the household pays the firm that becomes the firm's revenue so that's with respect to a uh, two sector model without leakages and injections so this flow of income between the household and the business firm and between the business firm and the household we continue in this direction barring no leakages or injection so this is how it will continue the household will pay the firm the business firm will pay the household and so on and so forth so let's take a look at the second diagram we have here which is also two sector model but this is with leakages and injections like we've explained here one of the examples of leakages is savings taxation imports and one of the examples of injections are investments government expenditure and exports so we're taking a look at one of the examples of leakages as well as injection so here we have one of the examples of leakage savings and investments so the normal flow of income between the household and the firm as we've drawn here is this so the assumption here is that the household gets to save that means from the income received for supplying labor services to the business firm the household will save and 
your savings determines your investments. So from the savings, the households we invest. So savings is always equal to investments. Also, the firms. The firms get revenue for supplying goods and services to the household. So from the revenue, the business saves. And like I said, your savings determines your investment. So the business also invests. So in a two-sector model with leakages and injection, savings is always equal to in, uh, investment or leakages is always equal to in, uh, injection. So let's take a look at the mathematical equation of this two-sector model with leakages and injection. So like I explained earlier, consumption is constant. The household consumes by buying food items like rice, millets, milk, and all that. The firm also consumes in terms of buying raw materials for the firm to produce. So consumption is constant. On this left hand side, we are going to be considering leakages. And on this right hand side, we are going to be considering injections activities. So on this side, let's consider leakages. So we have consumption to be constant plus savings, which is part of one of the leakages activity. Equals consumption is constant for the firm as well. Plus investments. So since consumption is constant, C we cancel out C. And what you are going to be having left is savings equals investment. So you have savings equals investments. So a developed economy, balanced economy, what has been saved will be equal to what will be invested. But in a developing economy like Nigeria, Nigeria is a lower middle income economy. Savings is not always equal to investment because in a developing economy there are too much of leakages and when there is too much of leakages there will be the money will not be uh, properly invested for example part of the tax which is one of the leakages taxation that has been paid by the citizens of a developing economy to the government the government will we, we told some we embezzle some we misappropriate some so all the money that has been paid as tax would not be further reinvested back to the economy. So this savings equals investment or leakages is always equal to injection is a typical case of a developed economy like United States, France, Germany, Netherlands, and so on and so forth. So leakages is always equal to injections in a balanced or developed economy because the money that has been saved is equally invested. So that's with respect to today's episode but before I drop off this conversation I have a bonus for you all. For you all. I have a bonus for you. So the bonus is about investment. You need to understand what investment is. So Investment means the use of resources to build new capital goods, primarily to create employment opportunities. And what are capital goods? Capital goods like building of roads, new and modern ones, building of dams, building of bridges, building of power plants. And these capital projects are aimed at increasing the productive capacity of an economy. So, expenditure on, capit uh, expedi expenditure on investments could be capital. Yeah, it's usually capital. Let's not say it's capital. It's usually capital. But that will lead us to investments could either be capital or financial. When we talk of capital investment, like I've mentioned, and it's usually carried out in Nigeria, for example, it's usually, uh, we're saying more of, public-private partnership, that's PPP, between the government and the private firms, that's the business firms. So they join hands to put in place roads, 
dams, bridges, schools, and all that. So capital investment could be made by uh, big firms, big companies, like one of the biggest companies we have in Nigeria is Dangote PLC. So Dangote PLC carry out some of the capital investments, and they are capital intensive in nature, a like building of kilometers of roads and all that. And the second we have financial investment. Financial investment is usually, usually made by uh, private individuals. And that has to do with uh, human capital development, whereby you invest in yourself in terms of acquiring education, skills, training. Because that skills, that training, that education that you've acquired, we continue to yield future benefits to you for years to come. So when you enroll for a four-year college uh, degree, that's financial investment. And financial investment could also be in terms of buying securities, such as shares, uh, bonds, guilt edge, and all that, primarily to uh, get uh, rewarded. That's dividend, dividend at the end of the uh, financial year when the company makes profits. So that's with respect to financial uh, investments. So as an individual watching me right now, try and make financial investments today by investing heavily in yourself. And to the business firms in Nigeria, please make capital investments. And that's we uh, bridge the infrastructural gap in Nigeria. I'm talking of Dangote and, and all the big firms that we have in Nigeria. Make capital investments today. Yeah. So that's with respect to today's uh, episode. I think you've learned one or two things today. No, so before I forget, before I forget, before I forget, what for today? The word for today, <laughs> I have to dish out the words for today. The word for today says, don't count the days, but let the days count. Don't count the days, let the day count. Let the days count. So at this juncture, I want to say a big thanks to everyone for having stuck with me this far. I really appreciate everyone for your unflinching uh, support so far. With respect to subscribing to our YouTube page, liking our videos, and all that. And if this happens to be the first time you, you're watching our videos, click the like uh, button. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe uh, bell. And that means each time I have a new video comes out, that will come straight directly to your smartphones, to your laptops, to your desktops, and what have you. So it's been a moment with you. Do you have a good one? I'll see you on my next video. So, so one second before I leave. Should anybody knows, should anybody watching right now knows Dan Gute, you should pass my message across to him. Pass my message across to him, all right? That I want to do business with him, all right? So thank you all for listening. Do have a good one. Bye-bye. I'll see you on my next video. Bye-bye. 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 Look back.